Warning, this story contains artistic depictions of sexual conduct. All characters in the story are over the age of 18. Any similarities to real people living or dead are purely coincidental. So, here we are. Robin has returned home. Uh, he just came from the park after a, uh, I wouldn't say fated encounter, but something that he was looking for and it kind of kind of happened and he is starting to stroke the fire of what his thoughts and fantasies are having after the risky encounter um he returned home and so that's now where we are picking up from so now he's returned home to sally with the milk Hey, Sally. I stand at the threshold of the living room, unsure if I should step inside or not. Do I dare? Why am I feeling so anxious? Is it because of my rapid deteriorating relationship with Sally, or is it something else? Guilt? I don't even need to close my eyes to remember the, the moans Belle made as she let her as she basically uh, molested the ice cream. <laughs> her cheeks were flushed and her eyelids, eyelashes trembled. Her head basically just going a little back and forth. <sighs> I shift, trying to drag my mind out of the past and into the present. I don't need these kind of distractions right now. I'm meant to be with Sally. But in my mind is miles and miles away. I brought the milk. Do you, uh, do you still want a coffee? I know what Sally's going to say before she opens her mouth to say it. And what took you so long? Where were you? What can I say? The good old-fashioned something-came-up excuse? It wouldn't be entirely wrong, no matter which way you choose to interpret it. I, I'm sorry. I just got caught up looking at the moon. It, really, it was really pretty tonight. Looking at the moon. <laughs> Whatever you say, Robin. I admit, it's not one of my better excuses. It's the truth. I just wanted a bit of fresh air, that's all. Why? Is the air in here not good enough for you? It isn't when Sally glares at me like that. It makes me feel short of breath, like I'm stranded on an alien planet. This is supposed to be my house. I pay for half the mortgages. I should feel uncomfortable. Should I should I feel uncomfortable in my own house? Come off it, Sal. Nothing happened. There wasn't enough time for anything to happen. I was only gone 20 minutes. More like half an hour. And what do you suggest I was doing in that time? What can a man do in half an hour? Sally sniffs. I don't know. It just seems suspicious. Suspicious? What's so suspicious about it? I've got the milk like I promised. You sure you don't want a drink? I'm not in the mood anymore. I'm tired. I thought she might say that. It's what I've been hearing in the bedroom for the last two months. Ouch. That's why he's repressed. It only makes sense that her general lethargy would only extend to the living room, too. Sally gets up to her feet dispositioning one of the cushions she was cradling back onto the sofa and gives me a withered look. I'm going to bed. Good night. I'm not sure how, but she even manages to make that sound like an accusation. But right. Good night. Sleep well, Sally Pally. But she doesn't reply. She brushes past me, our shoulders bumping for the briefest of brief seconds. And that's all. It's almost as though the mere thought of touching me makes her cringe. Day 3, May 13th. The next day dawns in a similar state of silence. Melly rushes off to school before I finish shaving in the middle in the bathroom mirror. 
My fingers slip when I hold the razor and I cut myself. It's only a shallow cut, but it takes me by surprise. I swear under my breath. Sally doesn't comment on it at the breakfast table. Maybe she doesn't notice. Or if she does, she doesn't care. But it stings like a mother... We sit there, Sally and I, picking at our cereal like baby birds. We don't say a single thing. The rustle of Sally's new paper, newspaper breaks the silence along with the steady tick, tick, ticking of the clock. But that's it. We could be in a silent movie, but one of us misplaced the in, in turn tile cards. Don't even know if I said that right. Cue cards, I'm assuming. My existence feels just as black and white, dull and monotonous. Is this really all there is to life? Sitting at the breakfast table with your wife, whom you used to love, but no, now you're just not sure if you, if you even like, while your teenage daughter tries to steadfastly ignore you? I sigh. In the quiet kitchen, the noise is almost overwhelming. It's lunchtime. I can hear the students, though when I say students, I really mean children, running around outside the playing field, screaming. I sigh. I don't know how many times I've done that today. Far too many to count. Why do they have to make so much noise? I know it must be dull sitting in class for hours on end, but the work they do is hardly taxing. They're in primary school. I suppose there's no reasoning with young children. They're all like that. Noisy, rambunctious, excitable. I'm sure raucous is something, but I have to look that up. It's the ones who aren't, the quiet, taciturn ones who sit in the corners with their heads bowed and don't clamor for the castanets you have to look out for. So basically the quiet ones who are just you know, not making any noise and just sitting around that you have to look out for. I sigh again. You'd think the sound of children at play would fill me with a certain sense of fatherly fulfillment, but it doesn't. Instead, it's mildly irritating. And the irritation is becoming less and less mild with every passing moment. The music room juts out of the main school building like an ugly afterthought, a sonar appendage of Frankensteinian origins. You can hear the children more loudly than ever from here. It doesn't help that it's so hot. I feel like I'm going to suffocate. The weather has been particularly merciless lately, scorching in the afternoon, freezing at night. Oh well, I'm a grown man. I'll just have to deal with it. I don't usually spend my lunch holed up in the classroom like a recluse. Though social anxiety may run in my family. Thank you, Grandma Iris, for passing those unwanted alleys down my... Or alleys. Down to my melly. I'm not what you would call shy. Maybe that comes down to experience. You stop being anxious when you get older. Sooner or later, you start to realize other people's opinions don't matter all that much. Oh God, how true. That's what I told Melly once. She replied, her head hanging, her voice muted. Is that why you and Mom were always shouting then? She wasn't trying to get at me. I don't think she was anyways. She was just asking a question. Her voice was even more defeated than her hunched posture. I didn't know how to reply to her, though, so I didn't say anything. That's a running theme in our relationship. Silence. I wish the kids outside would just shut up. It's like World War III out there. How can I tune a piano like this? It's not like the kids will ever even appreciate it. If only they actually cared about music. Things that might be slightly more bearable then. Unfortunately, they, much like everybody else in the world, to be honest, seems to think that music is a DOS subject. A joke. Not even five-year-olds take me seriously. Oh well, that's part and parcel of being in a music te is being a music teacher. At least I don't teach RE. I continue to fiddle with the inner workings of the piano. It's a battered old thing that's been in the school even longer than I have. Tuning it always takes ages. It's like a battle of wits, man versus music. I'd have better luck trying to hack into the Kremlin. 
We really, really need a new piano. I've told the headmistress this enough times, but she just shrugs off my concerns. Says there isn't enough room in the budget for such frivolous overspending. But frivolous? Okay, sure. You try teaching music when, with one barely functional piano and see how that goes. 99% of the time, it doesn't. No wonder everyone, everyone thinks that music is a joke. I think it's a joke too, but not a very funny one. Not for me. Why, fancy seeing you here. Ah. Oh my god. I lift my head, wiping my brow with the back of my arm. I recognize that voice. It's as airy as a chiffon cake with a teasing inflection. Bell. Did she just climb into the window? If so, I didn't hear her. I'm torn between being impressed by her stealthy entry and also being perturbed. I'm sure there are more ladylike ways to enter the building. Couldn't you just use the door? No way. That's boring. You'll be in trouble if you get caught. You might be mistaken for a burglar. A burglar? Yeah, right. What self-respecting burglar is going to break into a primary school music room? What is there here to steal anyways? <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> I suppose that's a fair point. I know. I'm full of them. Bell stands by the now open window, curtains flapping in the breeze as though she belongs here. Her skirt dances around her thighs. Hey, that outfit. She grins and strikes a pose. Yes, do you like it? It's a school uniform. The St. Catherine's uniform. I know, it's cute, right? I like the plaid skirt. I look her up and down, arms folded, eyes narrowed, like a real school teacher. Well, I am a real teacher, so that isn't an act. Sometimes I almost forget myself. They would never let you into St. Catherine's school looking like that. Uh-oh. And why not? Is it because I'm so devilishly good looking? It's because your skirt is far too short. It's, it should only be a few inches above your knees, not a whole foot. My, my, I'm so glad you noticed. It's a little hard not to. So, do you think I'm sexy? You can't take your eyes away from my beautiful thighs, is that it? I'm just trying to look out for your modesty. You want to play at being the gallant knight protecting your fair lady's honor? How touching. I never said you were a fair lady. <laughs> that may be true. Not with his hair. She pinches a few strands of her hair between her fingers. It's pitch black against her white skin. Tar split across snow. A dark lady then? Doesn't that sound romantic? I am not going to dignify that with an answer. Meanie, you're no fun. And after I got all dressed up for you, too. Yes, quite. And where did you get that uniform from, exactly? Haha, <laughs> you, you humans are so cute. Just You just ask so many funny questions. What do you mean by that? I mean, I can conjure a human body for myself out of nothingness, but you're asking me about my clothes? Fitting together all the bones in my fingers, the muscles behind my eyes, the cells that circulate through my blood and the heart is the hard part. The wrapping paper and ribbons that go around all that is easy. I could do it in my sleep. It's a fair point. Crafting clothes from thin air doesn't sound easier than summoning a living, breathing human body. Belle twirls, arms at her side, examining her uniform. Her far too short skirt flutters. This is definitely going where the the song I had mentioned in the last chapter, um, or the last episode, you know, the police don't stand so close to me. I'm just strutting, struggling to understand why. Why what? Why do you decide to wear a school uniform of all things? Do you really need to ask? Belle's eyes flash mischievously. It's because guys find it appealing. You do, don't you? I don't think we know one another well enough for this kind of conversation. 
That's what you say, but I know otherwise. The schoolgirl's outfit is more than just a uniform. It's a symbol of youth, and old men like it when young girls pay attention to them. It makes them feel wanted, needed, attractive, right? I turn my head away. I should be tuning the piano. I have a class in half an hour, and I don't know what I can do, if, what I'll do if I can't tune the piano. Maybe I'll forego my grandiose plans and bust out the maracas instead. Little children like making noise, though I'd probably enjoy that more than trying to warble through the Lord as my shepherd, all out of tune, out of time. Ooh, a piano! Fortunately, it seems the presence of this battered old Steinway has made Belle forget her previous line of inquiry. And it's a good thing, too. There is a time and a place to discuss one's sexual fantasies, and lunch break in the music room, in a primary school no less, is not one of them. I'm more professional than that. Belle crosses the room in five neat steps, her silky skirt fluttering, and takes a seat at the stool by the piano. Now what is she playing at? You play the piano? Of course. I'm a very accomplished spirit. Well, good luck in playing this one. It's ancient. I was in the middle of tuning it when a certain somebody happened to climb in through the window and distract me. Really? How rude of them. They sound like a very naughty girl. <laughs> they are fast becoming the bane of my existence. Well, I've always been of the opinion that naughty girls should be punished. Unfortunately, corporal punishment has been illegal for a long, long time. We're living in the 21st century now. Ah, what a pity. And I do so love being scolded. Belle sighs and shrugs her shoulder, but the teasing smile on her face doesn't waver. Oh well, what can you do? If I can't be scolded properly in the manner to which I am accustomed, at least I can be praised. <laughs> okay. Game face me. <laughs> And with that, Belle gets to her feet and it begins to peer inside the piano, and it's exposed in her, does it were. I wonder if the piano were a living, breathing creature, whether it would find this monthly tuning exercise of being opened up and invaded by unfamiliar fingers deeply embarrassing. What on earth am I thinking? This must be because of Belle. Well, gee, I wonder. I should stop this. I need to stop. But that's easier said than done, especially when given Belle leaning over the piano, her shirt, short skirt displaying a generous and some might even say overly generous amount of her behind. When she shifts, pressing her pale fingers against the strings, I see her underwear in stark detail. Is she doing this on purpose? What does the face tell you? I never knew turning a piano could be tuning a piano could be so interesting. I used to find the job incredibly dull. The subtle <laughs> of her thighs, constrained by her socks, look even more appealing like this. It's almost as though she's inviting wandering thinkers. <laughs> the fact that it went closer and it's just slowly raising up to this point. Maybe she is. I can be no con. It can be no coincidence that she keeps turning over her shoulder to shoot me glances, blinking from underneath her long, smoky eyelashes. I take a step backward. Why am I still looking? I should stop looking. She's only tuning piano, for Christ's sake. You couldn't make a decent porno out of that, could you? Oh, trust me, you could do a whole lot of things. If they could do that with a drying... a dryer... <laughs> Help me, I'm stuck, Step Bro. <laughs> what are you doing, Step Bro? That's where this would go. But Belle's trying. She's trying her best, and god damn, is it working too? Fuck. I need to say something. The atmosphere is becoming unbearable. Not even the sound of kids playing outside. Little monsters, all of them, can alleviate the pounding in my head, the twitching of my fingertips. So, uh, you know how to tune a piano too? 
Of course, I'm a spirit of many talents. And where did you pick that one up? Hmm, well, who knows? It's a secret. Like your age? Indeed, a lady never tells. For all you know, I could have been Marie Antoinette in a past life, eating cake and drinking tea. <laughs> oh, cheeky. While the rest of France slowly starved to death, right? But of course, I've always been selfish ever since I was born. When I find something I like, I detest the thought of sharing it with anyone. That sounds like foreshadowing. Belle looks at me, her eyes narrowed. Her eyes seem harsher under the sunlight somehow, more menacing than they were last night. Hmm. Definitely some foreshadowing. I swallow. I'm not so dense that I can't realize that was a threat. I'd better not bring Belle back home to meet Sally and Melly then. Not that I was planning on it. Can you imagine how awkward that would be? Hey there, Sally and Melly. I want to introduce you to somebody very special. This is Belle, my great <laughs> great aunt Kanisha's cat, who I attempted to save from, a drown from drowning when I was only six and has somehow returned to thank me in the favor with her body. Please don't be too alarmed. <sighs> like that would go down well. Sally's eyes would probably widen so much they'd roll right out of her head. And as for Melly, I'm not sure how Melly would react. I never am these days. I shake my head. This is a waste of time. Forget it. It's not going to happen anyway. You were never Marie Antoinette. I doubt the Queen of, Queen of France would ever have to tune her own piano. Indeed, I never did. Not when I was... Marie Antoinette at least you should thank me for disregarding degrading myself in such a manner for your sake Robin <laughs> I glance back at her legs her thighs and her underwear I think you're degrading yourself in a number of other ways it's meant to be a skirt not a belt and now you sound like a concerned father that's because I am a father I'd never let Melly go out dressed like that you say that but I wonder Parents don't know their children as well as they think. You're not all that close to Melody, are you? I blink. I was just playing around, I think, but Bill's words have stopped me frozen in place like a fi figure in a photograph. What does she know about Melody? All right, there we go. All done. With that exclamation, Belle sets down the wooden piano cover once again, hiding the delicate assembly of strings within. I raise an eyebrow. That was awful fast. Oh, are you doubting the quality of my handiwork, my good sir? I, who was once crowned Queen of France? I must admit, I am a little dubious. If you really can't tune a piano as fast as you claim, I'll be out of a job. Well, that's just how it goes in the cutthroat world of work. They always want newer people, younger people, people with bright eyes and fast fingers who work hard for less pay and don't truly understand their rights. I sigh. Bell's right. I've noticed an alarming trend lately, which has become sweeping through the school in the past few years. A number of the teachers, good teachers, men and women I was on friendly small talks terms with are being laid off. First it was Miss Long, then Mr. Garland, and Mr. Potts. It can't be any coincidence that these men and women are still all in their mid-fifties, or even older. The people hired to replace them, meanwhile, were so young they could have been a few years older than Melly, fresh from finishing their PGCEs. It's a wonder the kids listen to them at all. They're not much, other, they're much more than kids themselves. This school doesn't feel like a school to me. Not anymore. It's more like a nursery. I go to the staff room to escape being pawed and mauled by the children, not confronted with even more by them. I have no doubt in a handful of years I'll be laid off too, replaced with some trendy young boy or girl who insists on being called by their first name and likes listening to, oh, I don't know, Skrillex. I can't even read sheet music. You have a point, but I'd rather not talk about it. It's depressing. I see, I see. The looming prospect of unemployment is always a toughie, huh? Especially when you have a wife and daughter. 
They don't make things easy, do they? It's no wonder you resent them, especially when you're trying so hard. But they never seem to realize. I wince. My head pounds. She's right again. It's almost as though she can see right through me, peering inside the recesses of my skull and pulling out all the different wires within. I'm suddenly struck by a frightening thought. What if she knows me even better than I know myself? That's just humans for you though, huh? Ungrateful through and through. You get too old and you get tossed aside like some raggedy cardigan. Sure. They'll hand out at the usual platitudes. I'm sorry to let you go. You were an invaluable asset to our team, but they don't mean it. It means nothing, especially if they hang, out with, hang you out to dry like that. People always say things they don't mean. It's just manners, and manners don't cost a penny. I can't stand niceness for the sake of niceness. It's too tawdry. I feel my fingers clenching the fists at my side. I'm trembling. I wish I wasn't. Maybe Belle can sense my fear. I already said I don't want to talk about it. Hmm. <laughs> Belle exhales, running a hand through her short hair. Suit yourself, I guess. Being a queen in a past life, I can't understand your petty pedestrian worries. They're unsuited for a noble figure such as I. Now, would a noble figure wear a, wear a skirt that short? People would faint if they saw so much of an exposed ankle back in the heyday of Madame Antoinette. And that's precisely why I want to dress like this. Experimenting with new fashion trends is exciting. A schoolgirl uniform is hardly a fashion trend. I pause, wondering. And Marie Antoinette was also made redundant, wasn't she? In the worst way possible. Indeed. But I was dignified to the last. I did not scream or cry, not even when my head was on the chopping block. That would have been far too unladylike. <laughs> well, color me impressed. I don't think I would be able to handle being executed with such good sportsmanship. It takes practice, years of training. Don't worry, Robin. I'm sure you'll get there. I'd rather not if it's all the same to you. I quite like my head being attached to my neck. I quite like your head too. You're cute. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. We exchange brief glances and then we both start to laugh. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because the situation is so ridiculous. The two of us hold up inside the music room like fugitives hiding from the rest of the world. Right now I can almost believe Belle is my whole world. Almost. If it weren't for the sound of children playing outside that is. So, Robin, aren't you curious? Do you want to see what a good job I did? About the piano, you mean? That's right. Why don't we play together? Hmm. That might be nice. It's been a while since I've played with anyone else. Even though you teach piano? Even so. Mostly I just sit and listen to my students. I, get, I don't get a chance to play myself very often. Didn't you ever try to teach Melody? I did for a brief amount of time, but Melody didn't like it. She wasn't built for it. You mean she has stubby little fingers? She wasn't physically unsuited. It was more mentally, I suppose. She didn't have the knack. No staying power. It's sad. I really did want Melody to learn how to play the piano. It wasn't just some passing whim, it was my dream. Maybe it was because of grandfather, he was the one who taught me how to play the piano all those years back when I was five. He was a patient tutor who offered me words of encouragement and at the end of each lesson, he'd give me a fruit gum as a reward. I never saw playing the piano as a burden though. I'm sh burden, though I'm sure a lot of children uh, were made to learn instruments do. It was fun, I thought it was. I looked forward to every single lesson and especially enjoyed it when Grandfather would play alongside me. I thought those duets were played together were beautiful. They were a way for us two of us to uh, communicate on a deeper level than words. I guess that's why I wanted to teach music. Like most people who experience something unforgettable in their youth, I wanted something, nothing more than to share my feelings with others. 
I wanted to share it with my daughter, my Melody. But it didn't work out like that. I don't have grandfather's patience, and Melody had no desire to learn. She hated the piano and would always complain when it was time for her lessons. Not like Belle. Belle sits on the edge of the stool, leaving enough space for me to join her with an expectant look on her face. She wants me to play with her. Somebody actually wants me to play with them. Now when was the last time that happened? I haven't felt wanted like this for years. All right then, let's see what you can do. I roll up my sleeve, an unabashed smile tugging at my lips. It's the kind of smile that's impossible to suppress, just like my laughter that threatens to erupt at inappropriate moments. I take a seat by Belle on the stool facing the scratched old Steinway. The stool is small and I can feel Belle's side pressed against mine. For all her talk about being a spirit, her body is warm and inviting, reassuringly human. What do you want to play? I like Debussy, La Petite Suite is one of my favorites. You know that song, right? Of course I know it. I've been playing the piano for more than 30 years. Please have some faith in me. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot you were such an old man. Not as old as you. Touché. You're primary school teachers nowadays. You have such sharp tongues. I suppose that's no makeup for the fact that you can legally hit anyone, right? You can't legally hit anyone, right? Wow. As if I'd want to hit anyone. I'm not violent. What a shame. I like a man who can take charge. Speaking of taking charge, are you sure you'll be able to keep up? You were a cat for an awfully long time. I know, but cats are graceful creatures. I was a virtuoso even in my feline form. I have a vague memory of Belle clambering over the piano at Great Aunt's house, her paws pressing against the black and white keys in a cacophony of noise. <laughs> I laugh. Well, you have a point. You look a lot cuter when you smile like that. You don't smile nearly enough, Robin. I, I haven't had much to smile about recently. To tell you the truth, it feels like a bit strange. Maybe I fractured the muscles around my mouth. Well, I'm sorry if smiling is painful for you, but I won't let you off the hook. Not now that we've begun. I'm going to make you smile much, much more. Oh, you will, will you? When she says it like that, it doesn't sound like a challenge, and I don't like backing down. It sounds like a challenge, and I don't like backing down from challenges. Belle giggles coyly at the last note fades into silence, pausing to brush a strand of hair behind her ear. La Petite Suite should be a, to a tad longer than our abridged version, but we don't have enough time. Lunch break will be ending soon, and my classes will be assailed by children again, with their sticky fingers and gaping mouths. For a few moments, I had almost managed to believe Belle and I were the only ones left on the planet. For a few moments, that truly, that's truly what I wanted. But we all have to return back to the reality someday. I think between you and me, we made a right mess of that. Well, it's been a while since I played anything that complicated. And it's been a while since I had fingers. I apologize for being clumsy. It's fine. Even if you were clumsy, it was very passionate. Thank you. I'm always passionate in everything that I do. I can't understand humans who aren't who drift through life like jellyfish, pale and gray, even though their lives are so much shorter than mine. Like Debussy. Yeah, like Debussy. I think it might be good he's dead, though. He'd be very upset that we were butchering his song. Belle smiles, coiling a strand of dark hair around one finger. Well, I would love to stay and chat, but I should probably be going now. I glance at Bra Belle's impractical school uniform, a small smile on my face. I take it you have classes you need to attend. Of course. I'd love to hang around with my favorite teacher a little longer, but this girl is on a tight schedule. Playing the piano really wore me out. <laughs> it did. All you had to do was move your fingers. I am aware, but I'm still not used to maintaining this form. I think I need a nap. You're sleepy at lunchtime? You really are like a cat. I was a cat until a few days ago. Now, this cute kitty needs to go recharge. Chew. 
That was a kiss. Choo. <laughs> I think I'm a little more prepared for her outward show of affection today. She leans forward on the stool, not that she needs to, given how close we are already, and presses against against the tip of my nose, as light as a falling feather. But I still feel my face turning red. What is this anyways? I'm starting to feel like, like the schoolgirl here, school here, and I'm not even in the appropriate outfit. Thank God. Belle gets to her feet and smiles, giving me a coetish, coy, I can't even pronounce that name, that word, coetish wave. Bye, Mr. Hawkins. I'll see you again soon. Do you really have to leave the window? It might look just a little suspicious. Oh, don't worry. Nobody noticed me coming in here, so I'm sure nobody will notice me leaving. You're awful confident. Of course I'm confident. I was royalty in my last life, remember? <laughs> of course. And quicker than blinking, Belle slips through the window. I watch as she walks away, her dark hair fluttering around her shoulders. She disappears in less than a minute, as though she were never there at all. Alright, so that was the ending for this. And I'm going to call it, I'm going to cut it off here. It looks like he's uh, straying more and more to the point that uh, things are going to go bad. And he's going to take a very dark turn. But we won't know until we get there. Um, this is more of a story than a visual novel that you know you select your, your comments and returns. So we'll, uh, we'll soldier on. Uh, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, finish here. And we'll continue, and I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. <laughs>